over a thousand government video files recorded by unoccupied aircraft systems between May and September of 2018 during the four-month eruption of Kilauea Volcano on the Lower East Rift Zone have been released by the U.S. Geological Survey. Most of it has never before been seen by the public. This is our first video in a series exploring this newly available material. The federal data release contains footage that was used by emergency officials for monitoring the lava flows that destroyed over 700 structures, inundated over 13 square miles of land, and created 875 acres of new land along the Puma shoreline. The current active lava lake at the summit of Kilauea is the volcano's first eruption since these dramatic events over two years ago. The new video files were released without audio. In some cases, we have adjusted the brightness or contrast for better viewing, as some of the footage was recorded in low light or hazy conditions. The video archive begins on May 27th, nearly a month into the eruption that began in the Leilani Estates subdivision. On this day, the 24th fissure had just opened, erupting dangerous gas and lava. As the forested neighborhoods were engulfed by the burning flow, the nearby Pune Geothermal Venture Power Plant was being surrounded. Emergency officials scrambled to prevent a catastrophe. The Pune Geothermal um, Venture site is stable. Um, we uh, believe that we have uh, mitigated uh, any uh, risk to the community. Uh, we had anticipated that what might happen uh, is that the lava flow would inundate uh, the Puna Geothermal facility. Uh, and we have been working very hard for the last two and a half weeks to mitigate um, that possibility. We uh, feel at this point in time that the facility uh, is stable and secure. That evening, this emergency message was broadcast to residents of Leilani. This is a civil defense message for Sunday, May 27th at 7.45 in the evening. Leilani Estates residents on Nohea Street and Luana Street between Leilani Avenue and Kahukai and on Kupono Street between Malama Street and Leilani Avenue need to evacuate immediately due to a fast-moving lava flow from Fisher 7. Again, Leilani Estates residents on Nohea Street and Luana Street between Leilani Avenue and Kahukai and on Kupono Street between Malama Street and Leilani Avenue need to evacuate immediately due to a fast-moving lava flow from Fisher 7. Shelters are open at the Pahoa Community Center, Kaal Community Center, and the Shure Foundation Church. Shelters are pet-friendly. Thank you for listening. This is your Hawaii County Civil Defense. The next morning, Hawaii County Civil Defense officials briefed the media. Um, fire and military personnel and police out there on the checkpoints. Most of these UAS videos from that same day had not been seen by the general public until now. A big rush of lava broke through, it looks like on a, through a perch pond, and um, subsequently it took out approximately 10 houses at this point, probably might be more. But uh, so it brings us a total of 82 structures, and which is 41 homes. May 29th was another difficult day for Puna as lava finally crossed over Highway 132. Um, so we have some people in the back. The Hawaiian Volcano uh, Observatory provided this update during a community meeting in Pahoa. And that particular flow has reached past the uh, PGV access road and also has crossed Highway 132. There are three other events that were active this morning during the overflight, uh, 19, 20, and 18. The numbers aren't very uh, important, uh, but number 18 is the one that uh, was generating a new lava flow that uh, was moving toward the uh, east. And this afternoon, the location has uh, reached about this area right here, and it was still active. This is what the uh, lava flow looks like uh, leading toward the east from uh, Fisher uh, 18 uh, from this morning's overflight at about 6.30 in the morning. You can see it's a channelized flow, levees on either side. Uh, this is what uh, Fisher 8 looked like uh, actually at about noontime, not 6.30. I was in too much of a hurry to check my time. So this was taken at about noontime. Uh, the lava fountain is uh, among the highest that we've seen so far. Uh, it's on the order of almost 200 feet, perhaps a little bit higher. And as a consequence, the fragmentation of the lava fragments uh, leads to 
uh, small pieces of lava or spatter and also Pele's hair uh, that can get wafted up uh, from the heat above that plume and then the winds will carry it downwind. Uh, Pele's hair uh, is a little coarser than our hair uh, but it's made of volcanic glass. I've always considered the most beautiful place on God's given earth. Mayor Harry Kim also spoke to the public that night. I can mention places that some of you have never heard of that was our playland of the most beautiful place called Warm Springs down the road. Some of you know of obviously of Queen's Bath, Kaimu, Kalapana, etc. In trying to make you live a life that is normal, as impossible as it is of what is going on. We've had to make adjustment on Lilani Estates more than once. But this morning, last night, I told them, I can no longer afford to put residents at risk. I can no longer ask of do care, police, fire, National Guard to go banging in the dark of a neighborhood they don't know to say, you must get out now. By May 30th, the growing eruptive vent that would become known as Fissure 8, with fountains of lava over 200 feet high, fed flows moving north out of Leilani Estates, then northeast along Highway 132. Geologists used UAS cameras to track the lava flows. The aircraft also hovered over the molten channel to measure flow velocities. In our next video, we delve into the new data released from June 2018 and the last recorded views of the seaside village of Kapoho.